Today we're gonna see how Garry Kasparov challenged a computer capable of calculating 200 million positions per second. Let's see this historic battle of man versus machine. Gary opens up with knight to f3, d5 and pawn to g3. Usually when you play against a computer and you know it's gigantic computing power, you try to avoid tactical complications and necessity to calculate variations and compete to computer in that regards. So people usually try to play more positional chess. And that's what Gary is doing here. Anyway, so far both sides are just developing their pieces, nothing really fancy. In here after d3, d blue played bishop to d6. By the way, you can see that black is in fact playing the London system. So computers, just like us, sometimes don't feel like studying a lot of theory and just settle for a simple setup. Gary plays knight to d2, castles h3, forcing black to make a decision about this bishop. Black played it back and here pawn to e3. Gary's playing rather defensive, just putting up this defensive wall of pawns and seeing what computer is gonna do here. Black played pawn h6, a useful move so that if white ever wants to chase this bishop away, the bishop has some escape path there. And here Kasparov was probably annoyed by this pin over his knight. He decided to slide the queen away so that the knight is no longer pinned. Black played queen to a5, finalizing its development and also potentially preparing for some bishop jumps on the queen side, putting pressure there, and Kasparov decided to prevent this by playing pawn to a3. And right now Kasparov is playing very nice game of checkers, let's see what black can do. Here black played bishop to c7. So if you ever have the situation when you don't know what to do after an opening and you play some random meaningless move, you may say that you're playing like a supercomputer. Anyway, Gary played knight to h4. Um, and there was a point in this move actually, so white wants to play g4, and as the bishop, bishop goes back, white will be able to capture it, right? Let me show you what, what I'm talking about, I'll play some random move by black. So if black ignores this threat, then g4 is pretty strong, forcing the bishop to go back, and after this trade, white got a bishop and disrupted black's pawn structure, gaining some position advantage. Of course, a uh, computer noticed that, so instead it played pawn to g5 which is the right move, but also quite a committing move that weakens the king, which is going to be a long-term problem for black. But And also this bishop is now more active along this diagonal, more dangerous for black, but computer obviously does not shy away from active aggressive moves. That of three and black goes pawn e5. The right move grabs the center, also shuts down this bishop. So, so far computer is playing really good. By the way, we're talking about the game from their 1997 a chess match that took place in New York. Obviously, the computers weren't as strong back in the day, but nevertheless, Kasparov actually lost this mage and he was a reigning world champion at the time. Therefore, we're talking about the computer that was actually stronger than any human being on the planet. So, that's quite an interesting battle anyway. And here, Gary played pawn e4 because finally he needs to grab some space in the center. And also, if white doesn't play this at some point, black may decide to play e4 and kick off this knight. Therefore, white needs to also get some space. Black plays rook to e8, quite correctly, putting the rook into play, also opposing it to the queen just in case. And here Gary played knight to h4. And Kasparov is horsing around. And when we play moves like that, knight h4, back to f3, back to h2, it's called lack of planning. When Gary is playing that, it's called maneuvering. Life is not fair. Anyway, here computer played queen b6, and at first I couldn't comprehend the reason for this move, but then I realized it. I think that Deep Blue probably remembered how it suffered a painful defeat against Gary in their match a year ago. And therefore it's worried that Gary can play pawn f4 and break open the situation on the king side and try to attack there. So queen b6 is a prophylactic move that pins the pawn down to the king. It's a pretty deep idea. In fact, I don't think Gary would dare to play a 4 against a machine, because again, that involves really complex calculation, where computers are obviously superior. So I don't think Kasparov would play that, but just in case, Black decided to stop that. Kasparov played queen c1 here, because he needs to untangle all these pieces somehow. So he plays queen c1 and he finds a way to regroup them. Quite a nice way, actually, because even though, again, the computer is extremely strong, but you see that in terms of position understanding, Kasparov is maneuvering pretty well here. Black played pawn a5, and here rook e1, involving the rook into play, and also vacating the square f1 for the knight. So after a play, black played bishop d6, and here Kasparov played knight to f1, and his idea is to reroute the knight to f5, a really juicy square. From there, it'll attack the bishop, attack the pawn, and it's an excellent outball square for the knight overall. And this forces black to do something. 
because it cannot just allow the knight to stand there on f5 and to dominate. So black has to do something, and black decided to trade here on the center and to play bishop c5, mounting pressure along this diagonal. But it doesn't stop Kaspar from playing knight to e3. Here black played another good move, rook a to d8, just bringing all the pieces into play, and also the rook is now controlling an open file. Kaspar played knight to f1, because the knight on the rim is dim as we know, and so it centralizes the knight and defends the other knight just in case. And here, Black reportedly said, hold my beer, and played pawn to g4. Which is quite an interesting thing, you know, that even for a computer with this monstrous computing power, you can see that it's difficult to evaluate long-term consequences of a move. From human perspective, it's pretty clear that weakening the king like that, creating all these weaknesses, is probably not a good idea. But the problem for black is that there is no immediate way for white to take advantage of that. Because if this knight ever moves, you know, that exposes white, white's king actually, and black is gonna grab something along this diagonal. So there is no immediate way for white to attack black. But long term, it's gonna be a weakness because pawn cannot move back, and therefore black won't be able to fix their weak pawn structure. So g4 is wrong, but it just goes to show how beautiful a chess game is that even a supercomputer cannot evaluate it properly. Anyway, Garrett traded here on g4. And then, again, if white trades off this knight, that exposes this weak diagonal, and therefore Kasparov just played pawn to f3, uh, chasing this knight away. At first it looks scary to allow this kind of a pin, and now knight looks weak, but Kasparov understands that he can slide the king away on the next move, and his position has got to be fine. And once again, black has to do something, because if white just plays king out and then goes knight f5, that can get really bad for black. And Deep Blue found another nice maneuver. It played bishop e7, and after Kasparov's king h1, it rerouted the bishop to g5, another excellent square. And now the knight is pinned down to the queen and can't move anyway. By the way, Deep Blue is, uh, another, is an older version of Fritz, so you probably faced, or at least you might face, the same program yourself as Gary's playing here. Kasparov played rook e2, and he's annoyed by the pin once again, and he wants to move the queen away. Here, computer played pawn a4, trying to attack on the queen side as well. Kasparov shouted it down with b4. And here, black played another great move, pawn to f5. Now, it looks like quite dangerous for black to do so, but obviously, the computer is not the one to shy away from dangerous things. And uh, the point is still the same. Black has to change the situation somehow and has to attack somehow. Because if black does some awaiting moves and white plays queen e1 and knight to f5, it can get really tough for black. So f5 is the way for black to take advantage of all these pins and try to attack brutally white right now. So the pawn on f3 currently is hanging. And actually for a moment, it may seem like black is taking over and Kasparov is about to resign here. Again, especially given the fact that he's facing a machine that can calculate all these variations really well. But we gotta give due credit to Kasparov. He played the right move, pawn f4, the only move that saves the game. It gives up the exchange here. But even though, you know, white gave up the rook here in exchange for a bishop, at least the position remains to be closed. The king is still dangerous. Um, these rooks are not active because this pawn is covering the file for the rook, so the game goes on. Black here played the correct move knight to e5. Black could not recapture here on g5, because if black played this move, that would allow white some deadly attacks like this. So white could remove this knight somewhere, let's say knight to c4, even sacrifice in the knight, but then queen takes g5, followed by queen to g7 checkmate, would be something that Kasparov would certainly enjoy a lot. Computer obviously calculated this line and it played knight e5. The correct move, black does not care about this pawn, instead black wants to develop their own attack here on the king side. And Kasparov also figured out the right move here. So both sides are actually playing really great chess here. At first it may seem like this pawn is hanging, so we gotta tr take here. But Kasparov realized that as these pawns split up, later on black will be able to attack them and grab them. And so instead, it's better not to take the pawn, but rather to keep his pawns connected when they at least defend each other and cannot be taken that easily. Also, if in the future white is capable of pushing them forward, the pawns can actually get really dangerous. So position remains to be very interesting. Uh, black played bishop f3, also trying to develop some sort of an attack against white's king. Kasparov played bishop c3, another nice prophylactic move, just in case the bishop covers this d2 square, so that if the queen moves away somehow, the rook can never enter the square and start attacking white. So bishop c3 is quite a prudent move. Black played queen b5, 
it wants to bring the queen down here and start attacking the king. Therefore, Kasparov plays queen f1 to counter that and it offers an exchange of queens. It's also nice because when you're playing against a computer, generally speaking, you do want to trade off material because again, it's just difficult to calculate variations as good as computer. So going to an endgame, relying on your understanding of chess is the right strategy for humanity <laughs> to withstand this battle. Now we've got uh, an endgame, which is nice for white because you know, black can now longer attack white and white can try to make use of these passed pawns. Uh, black played h5, a very good move actually, blocking the other pawn so that it can never move forward and join this avalanche of pawns. Kasparov played king h1 because he wanted to free this bishop. It was previously pinned and white's got to do something about that. White does not really want to trade bishops here because that would open the rook for uh, attack along the e-file. So that's not what white wants. And so instead, Kasparov plays king g1. Again, very high level chess from Kasparov and to some extent from computer. <laughs> well, it actually played really well. Here I played king f8 though, the move which I don't fully understand. Uh, it often happens in human games where you play the king move and your opponent plays the king move. And the same thing happens in an opening. You know, you develop a knight, your opponent develops a knight. So for humans it's common when they don't know what to do, sometimes they just mimic their opponent. But machines are somewhat not free of the same error. Sparf played bishop h3, saying, hey, maybe in the long run I'm gonna prepare a g4 break somehow so that I can activate my past pawns. Black played b5, shutting down the situation on the queen side, king f2, centralizing the king, because that's a good idea for an endgame. And here black, surprisingly, once again mimicked Kasparov's move. So Kasparov played king f2 and Kabir played king to g7. Looks like Kabir still had a lot of respect for Gary if he decided to mimic his moves. But Kasparov took the opportunity, he noticed that, hey, for a second the knight is pinned, and so he could break through with g4 right away without any additional preparation taking advantage of the fact that the knight can no longer move and cannot capture here. So if black tries capturing here, which computer didn't do, but if black would trade everything here, that actually turns out really good for white because the knight is pinned and attacked by the knight. White is actually going to win some material and win the game. Uh, computer played king to h6, which is the right way, stepping away from this pin as well as supporting this pawn on h5. And here Kasparov followed a good rule. And if you're a part of the Igor nation, you probably know the rule to take is a mistake. Right, so whenever you take, you usually make your opponent's life easier. So instead, Kasparov just defending these pawn on g4 once again and saying, hey, if you want to take, go ahead. And black actually did that. And after this exchange of everything on the, the g4 square, it turns out that these pawns are now extremely dangerous. And in fact, there is just no way for black to simply stop white from moving them forward. Black played rook d5 in the game. You may wonder why didn't it push the pawn forward. Well, it could, but after e3 and king e2, there is no way for black to make progress anyway. I mean, the d2 square is controlled by the bishop, by the way, notice how prudent was Kasparov playing this move like 15 moves earlier to cover the square d2 so that the rook cannot enter there and black can make no progress. So in the game instead, d blue played rook d5, Kasparov played pawn to f6, and now threatens to push pawns forward, d blue played rook to d1, and later developers from IBM who developed this software claim that rook d1 was a result of a bug, that computer could not figure out the best move for black and it settled for a random move. Which actually sounds like a lame excuse to me because black splish was lost and it couldn't do anything anyway. So I wouldn't certainly say that black lost this game because of a program bug. That's ridiculous. Anyway, after g -son, D blue felt blue and resigned. If you ever felt annoyed by your opponent pinning your knights like this in various different openings, then I've got another video where I'm sharing how Gary Kasparov used his favorite and super effective plan against that pin. So if you're curious, check it out right here. Also, if you want to level up your positional chess overall, check out this free masterclass by clicking at the top or clicking the link below in the description of the video. Hope it was helpful and I'll talk to you soon.